I come to you today in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Unlike John's gospel, which we heard from last week, and is concerned as much with the personhood and divinity of Christ as it is with the historicity of the events of Christ's life, teaching, and ministry, and creation, Mark's gospel seems to have a much more urgent story to tell us. Mark's gospel is generally accepted as the oldest of the gospels, probably written either right before or directly following the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem by the Roman occupiers in around 70 AD. Given this historical placement, Mark's explanation of events has been argued to probably be based off of first-hand accounts of those who had met Jesus or who knew Jesus and the disciples, who perhaps even saw these events unhold, unfold and or heard them shared by those who were there perhaps even shared by those same disciples. The earliest followers have already begun to distill a specific set of stories and lessons of Jesus' ministry and teaching and creation, and Mark is attempting to collect them all for those who are joining this new expression of faith. And the period of time that Mark compiles this text is telling as well. It is a time of war, it's a time of great uncertainty. It's perhaps a time of great anguish as the temple is destroyed. Mark speaks to the reality of the setting in the urgency with which he compiles the events of this gospel. The word we heard today immediately, a couple different times, appears throughout the gospel of Mark. And further, Mark is not creating an evangelistic work to be used in converting others to this new following but rather he's writing a text to shore up the faith and belief of those who are already following Christ, intending to strengthen their faith and provide them with foundational events and teachings of Christ as they come into their own belief in Christ and in turn begin to spread this message out into their communities. This is why the sense of immediacy is so prevalent throughout Mark's gospel. There's a real urgency present in the followers of Christ that Mark is writing to as they are caught up in the middle of this first Jewish-Roman war. For these followers of Christ are both Gentiles impacted by this conflict and faithful Jews who are coming together in a new expression of their Jewish faith. Seeing this faithful Jewish teacher, Jesus Christ, as perhaps the Messiah of prophecy that has come to walk among us in creation. The reality of this urgent point in time places the immediacy of actions and events in Mark's gospel into context and allows us to hold two things to be true. The earliest disciples recognize Christ as distinct and special from the beginning, and we too can drop everything, follow Christ, even or perhaps especially in moments of great turmoil. Before Christ calls these first disciples today, he comes into the region of Galilee, proclaiming God's good news with the message, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent, believe in the good news. Christ is the good news. Mark is making a point of stating that Christ is the bearer of the good news of God, which has come into creation. Even as Mark will not directly declare Christ's divinity throughout his text, including the original ending of Mark's gospel, which does not include any post-resurrection appearances, but rather ends with the stone rolled back, the tomb empty, and a heavenly being telling the women that Christ is waiting for them in Galilee. Even with all of that, it's still clear in Mark's gospel that Christ is the Messiah that Christ is the one to follow in the new expression of faith that is springing up all over the region as the followers of Jesus begin to gather with one another and spread this good news into their world. The lectionary cycle that we get our readings from every Sunday always seems to align with the reality of our world in pretty profound ways. Perhaps this is because the lessons of Christ tend to pretty universally meet our needs in this world and hold us to a standard of compassion and faith, of welcome and community. But I also tend to think that the lessons assigned to us often speak directly to the reality of our world because the reality of our world and the reality of our creation is cyclical, just as the lectionary is cyclical. Three years ago, 
when we last heard this specific passage in the context of this season after Epiphany, we had experienced a number of anxiety-inducing events in the several weeks and months preceding, which had culminated with the storming of the U.S. Capitol building on January 6, 2021. Three years later, the anxiety is again beginning to ratchet up in our community and our society. There's an urgency building, bubbling up, and there's fear bubbling up. We have just started the primary season for the presidential election cycle, which will come to dominate the news cycle for the next several months. Already questions are being raised about the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party, given the many, many legal battles he's currently facing, and the reality of what it would mean for him to gain, regain the presidency, not just for his own personal troubles, but for all those who he targets with promises of persecution. Locally, our new city council has made decisions from their first meeting together to go in a different direction from the previous council, a direction that had created proactive solutions to the very real presence of those in our community who experience homelessness and was promising to help create further pathways for those who needed various levels of entry and care. And now we're cast back into a period of unknowing, of fear, of worrying about maybe going backwards, of ending the solutions that are working, let alone allowing the next set of solutions to even get off the ground. There's war in the Holy Land. There's fear among Christians in the Holy Land who feel pushed aside, ignored, persecuted for existing in this space as the two larger religious factions of the region go to war with one another. History, just like our lectionary, is cyclical. And while this may be discouraging on the surface, that it seems like we can't ever get out of our own ways, that the good news of God is not making a difference in this world, if we continue to be caught up in this never-ending cycle of history, I don't think that's accurate either. For the good news of Christ has continued to make positive changes in our world. We worship today in a church that ordains women, that fully affirms the lives of all people, that makes a real measurable difference in our community every day, including just yesterday, when we came together to offer fish services on a Saturday due to the weather this week. And we had people who came who can never regularly access fish because they work during the week. A real difference made. Because of the progress that our culture and our church has made over the centuries, I think, like Mark writing this gospel, that the urgency of the moment is not something to be afraid of, but it's something to hold on to, to lean into, and our convictions to share the good news of God, to connect with this Messiah who has come to us to follow Jesus Christ immediately. Christ's opening message in Mark's gospel is one of endings and new beginnings. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent believe, for there is good news. Salvation, grace, love has come into creation, will be offered to creation, will forever be given to creation. We must accept this message of good news in our own faith. We must listen to Christ as he calls us to follow. We must be willing to drop everything immediately, regardless of the impact on others, to follow the good news because it is in following the good news and following the footsteps of Christ in walking in the way of love that we will change this creation, that we will change our society, that we will change our community. We drop everything immediately because Christ promises to us today that in following him, he will use our gifts and knowledge and faith to be successful as his followers. I will make you fish for people is not a silly pun by Christ. It's a promise to take these men who know how to care for their community, to care for their equipment, to care for creation, to care for each other, out into the world and use that knowledge that they already have in casting nets of faith, casting nets of belief, casting nets of healing and teaching. This fishing for people is about drawing in the crowds, about spreading the good news, 
about trusting that God has called us in our faith into work that we already know how to do. Here at St. Stephen's, we are a community of people who feel drawn in towards the good news of Christ that is coming out of this place, out of all of these people, out of our worship and mission and ministries. We come together acknowledging that there is a sense of urgency in creation right now. And perhaps that's what continues to draw others into this space as well. There is urgency in creation right now, but here in this space with these people seated next to you, we know that God calls to us in this moment in time to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. That God calls to us to use our faith, our knowledge, our abilities and skills to together change this creation. There is urgency in creation right now, but here in this space we experience a faith that is deeply rooted with one another, that produces an abundance of blessings for our community, that produces faithful followers of Christ who go out from this place walking in the way of love that has been laid before us. There is urgency in creation right now, but here in this church we find rest. We find our conviction we find strength, we find love, we find faith. Because of this place, because of these people sitting next to us, because of every new person who joins us in their own journey of faith, we know that here at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Longview, Washington, the good news has come to us. And we are tasked simply with going out and casting our nets in order to draw in others to experience this truth. Amen. Amen.